Uh, this uh, belongs to uh, the Turing, sorry, whether it belongs to the language A, NFA. And if it does, then you know that uh, this machine A, that's a confusing <laughs> a machine name, you've got a language like this, A, NFA. You know, don't be confused. Right? So if uh, this Turing machine, if it, if it accepts this, right? Well, that, that means that A uh, does accept W. And if A accepts W, well, then R generates W. Okay? So there's an answer to your question. So, so if this uh, Turing machine, this, this component of P, so N, N is a part of P, a smaller part. So if, if N accepts, you know, accepts this, well, then have P accept. And if N does not accept this, well, then have P reject. Okay? So, you, so in other words, P is either accepting or rejecting, and therefore P is a decider. And therefore this language here is decided. It's a decidable language. You have found a Turing machine that uh, will take a string here, this string, and accept it or reject it. It won't uh, loop. Okay? Therefore the language, this language, is uh, decidable and that in turn means you uh, you can give a yes no answer to this question uh, does this regular expression generate w yeah. I, 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 you know, if you haven't clicked on that core idea of how how to convert a programmable problem into a belonging to a language type problem uh, you know, go back and, until you get it, because otherwise, you know, this whole chapter just becomes meaningless. It'll just just wash over your head. So, uh, you know, play it back and, until you've until you've got it. Read the text, uh, listen to, you know, rewind, listen to what I'm saying, and, and until you've got it. Um, all right. So that's that square now. Uh, so we've done what three? We've done three theorems now for uh, in what case? We've done it for DFAs um, accepting a particular, you know, an arbitrary string. We've done it for NFAs uh, accepting an arbitrary string, and we've just done it now for uh, regular expressions generating uh, a random string. Now, so these three theorems. Um, so if you if you uh, if, if you have a Turing machine, you, you present it with a, uh, a DFA, you know, the, the machines, you know, two two types of machines, a DFA or an NFA, or a regular expression. Now, now these three are all equivalent. Uh, you know when you present it like here here, you could have a DFA. You could have an NFA, or you could have a regular expression, and you have the corresponding language here. And it doesn't, uh, the, be, because these three things are all uh, equivalent, you can convert one into the other. So it's uh, it's a similar problem. So uh, yeah, the the Turing machine it can convert uh, one form of encoding, like um, whether this is like a, a DFA or an NFA or a regular expression. Uh, the Turing machine that takes these strings as input, it, it can convert uh, whatever's here into the form that it wants. So there's like you know, three three different uh, equivalent uh, representations or encodings: you know, um, DFA, NFA, bigger expression. Okay. So right. now. Uh, now we do another language. Uh, this this is more a, a tool. Uh, we're going to need it for future theorems. It's a it's quite a useful tool. It might seem might seem at first sight uh, somewhat trivial. You know, why why bother with this uh, particular case, special case? But uh, it, it's important because we need it. It's a, an important tool, stepping stone, if you like, uh, for future for future theorems. And uh, let's see. Um, we're we're asking whether 
time, when we're talking of finer autumn time. Uh, is, is it possible that uh, the language um, recognized, because we're talking about a machine now, uh, by a finite automaton, is it possible that the language recognized by a finite machine is just empty? So, um, uh, can, can we construct an algorithm that uh, would answer, yes or no, whether an arbitrary finite automaton uh, recognizes uh, the empty, like an empty language. There's just nothing in the set. Remember, the language is a set of strings. Well, there's just nothing in the set. Right? It's just, it's, uh, it's just effectively uh, the empty set. I remember last board I was getting, I had a bit of a question about, you know, did that mean the empty string? No, the empty set. It's, so it's, it's, it's like the, the zero with a slash through it. Okay? The empty set. It's like the wiggly brackets with nothing between the wiggly brackets. The, the empty set. Zero members. Alright, so uh, let's see. So in the, the previous three theorems, um, you know, we, we were asking uh, whether a particular machine or regular expression uh, accepts a particular, uh, yeah, particular a random stream. Now, uh, in this this uh, case, um, we're we're trying to see whether a machine, a finite automa automaton, accepts any strings at all. Right? We're testing that. Um, now, equivalently, uh, you're testing: does it accept no strings? So if it accepts one or more strings, uh, the answer to the question, does it accept zero strings, would be no, obviously, because it accepts some, okay? Or, so, uh, we, so that, that's the computational problem. Uh, uh, find an algorithm to a uh, Turing machine that uh, answers the question, yes or no, whether a particular, you know, random uh, finite automata uh, accepts no strings, okay? If it accepts no strings, the answer is yes. And if, uh, the, if uh, the finite automaton accepts one or more strings, then the answer is no, right? So find that algorithm. In other words, find the Turing machine that decides this language, okay? Now, notice there's no, uh, there's no string in here now. It's just, uh, it's just the description of the machine itself, right? without, without uh, any uh, mention of uh, a string. There is no W here. Um, uh, you know, be, be conscious of that. And, and the reason why you don't, you, don't need, you don't need to know about it, it's irrelevant. And uh, so this this language, you know, you know, we're going to convert the problem. You know, does uh, you know, does a, a, an arbitrary finite automaton? Um, is it possible that it could accept zero strings, right? So so that it's corresponding uh, the language of that machine. So you know, the language this machine is finite automaton A. So if a, is a, is, uh, can you find an algorithm? You know, a Turing machine that uh, answers the question yes or no whether the language uh, recognized by this machine is in fact the empty set. You know, it just it recognizes no strings. No, it accepts no string. Uh, the, the, yeah, it accepts no strings. Okay, the empty set. All right. So here's uh, the the language and. That uh, yeah, we convert that computational problem into a belonging to a language type problem. So here's, here's the, the language that we'll, uh, uh, we will try to show, you know, to prove is decidable. Okay. Uh, no mention of W. So uh, so the string that goes into input as input to your Turing machine is just of this form. So in other words, it contains in uh, String format form. Um, you know, it's, it's information about your finite automaton A, 
yeah, this find all to be done, is uh, encoded, uh, represented uh, in string form, you know, linear sequence of symbols. And uh, your Turing machine will, will uh, you know, read this string, extract the information about your finite automaton, A, and will then see if uh, the language that, uh, that this automaton uh, recognizes is the empty string. Okay, so that's next session.